Can you guys hear me? Ooh. You guys can hear us, okay, good. Okay, cool. Hey Amy, I have this problem. What, Isaac? I have this data problem. My team and I work diligently hard to do all this work for the company, mm -hmm. uh, but we're having a hard time communicating that uh, our progress out to the rest of the team. Do you have any way of helping us? Well, admitting you have a problem is the first problem. So step, step one. Step. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, do you have any data you use to kind of help decide if you're on track or not? I actually do have data. Is that step two? So what do I do with this data once I have the data? Well, we actually have an Agile Team dashboard that you could use to... Well, we have an Agile Team dashboard that I can use that I actually built myself? Yes, we do. Nice. Nice. Tell me more. All right. Hi, I'm Amy Shea. I am an Agile coach at Tableau. Hi, I'm Isaac Obesso. I'm a senior data scientist at Tableau. And we're here today to talk to you about moving your organization's mindset through metrics and how we did that with Agile Transformation at Tableau. Thanks, Isaac. All right, so for our agenda, as you can see, I really like emojis. I just thought I'd throw some in here. Um, I'm gonna take you through a crash-free course in Agile. We don't want anyone drinking and driving here. Uh, and then I'll tell you the history of Agile Transformation at Tableau. And then finally, Isaac will come back up here and teach you how the sausage is made. So uh, first, I'm gonna draw your attention to this. Quote, has anyone in your company ever said this? I love it when projects are over budget, under delivered, and of minimal value to the customer. Anybody raise your hand? Anybody said that? All right, so you probably actually have decent employers. Um, so while, what Agile does is try to basically combat all these tenants. Um, but before I go into Agile, let's see, how many people have experience actually working in an Agile team? Raise your hand. Oh, a lot of you. Okay, cool. Well, I'll give you guys a brief history for anyone that's not familiar. So Agile is a software development methodology that was born at a ski resort, as all good things are, in 2001. Um, there are 17 software enthusiasts that had been working in a methodology called Waterfall. And Waterfall is a methodology of software development where the <coughs> stages of development are gated. So you might start with a two-year project, and you'll have, let's say, a quarter of that spent really nailing down requirements. And then you'll move to a section where you actually do the development, do the coding. And then you'll go into a testing phase where you might have heard terms like model office or user acceptance testing. And then finally, you'll go into release or deployment. Now, changes could have happened along those two years uh, where the market is changing. The customer's like, no, no, I actually don't want that. But implementing those changes is quite onerous. Uh, there's concepts such as change management control that are involved in that. So the enthusiasts that developed Agile really wanted to work on iterative development. And what that is, is breaking your project into small releasable chunks and iterating or improving on that release to your customer. So Agile really focuses on collaboration between the development team and their stakeholders or even their customers. It focuses on having multiple iterations that you release in. Uh, it also incorporates what Waterfall uh, doesn't do as well, which is responding to change. So if you haven't changed requirements, great. Once you hit that next iteration, you can take that in and prioritize that above other items that may have been there before. And finally, continuous improvement. So based on the iteration or the time duration that you worked, let's say that's two weeks, for example, you'd say, you know what? We did this code, but our quality was pretty bad, and we were rushing at the end. So what can we do differently next time to improve? And so we build those improvements into the next sprint or the next iteration. So to illustrate Agile for you, we're going to play a game. If anyone checked out, we have champagne and caviar up here. It wasn't a lie, and it wasn't a gimmick. Um, so uh, I will ask, is anyone here that hasn't played the ballpoint game that would like to come up? Uh, we need four volunteers. All right, one, two, three, four. All right, come on up. All right, Isaac's going to demonstrate. Uh, yeah, anywhere here, great. So, um, as I mentioned in Waterfall, so you have a set duration for the project. So in this case, two minutes of ball play. <laughs> uh, or you wanna go, maybe go out here, go out here, yeah. We can change and adapt, by the way. That's right, we're Agile. <laughs> Okay, so um, in Agile, we'd break that up in iterations. So for the purposes of this demonstration, we're gonna do two one-minute gameplay intervals. So a couple of rules and requirements to the game. Number one is that every team member must touch each ball. 
Number two, each pass must have airtime. So no passing just directly from hand to hand. There needs to be some free moment where the ball is untethered. Number three, you can't pass to the person to your left or to your right if you were shoulder to shoulder. And four, every ball must end where it begins, kind of like the circle of life. Okay? So every ball that makes it through this process is going to get one point, and then every ball that's dropped counts as nothing. It's almost like wasted work. All right, so here's our activity flow. You're going to have one minute to plan your approach. I'll set the timer on my phone here. And then you're going to tell me how many balls you think you can make through your cycle in one minute. Okay, so then we're going to basically double that estimate, assuming that's your waterfall estimate, because you would have played two minutes. But for this purpose, one minute, one estimate. And then I will give you one minute to actually play ball. And then finally, after that, you're going to count all your balls, tell me how many you got in that round, and then you're going to retrospect or discuss how your team can improve. So here's the four bags of, or ooh, three bags. There's another, you might want to grab all those. Okay. Another. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to set the timer, and I'm going to have you guys. Yeah, guess how many balls you can go in one minute. So I'm going to start right now. So go ahead. <laughs> Given the rules, how many balls do you guys think you can get done in a minute? We can plan this right now. Minute starts. You're planning now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And you might want to say it out loud so people here can hear you. Great. <laughs> Anyone has any suggestions? Uh, so do we, need to be, do we need to be in a straight line or can we be in a circle? It doesn't matter. It's self it doesn't matter. You just cannot pass to like your left I or your right. Not pass your left or right. So if I pass, if I get a ball pass to you, then you would pass to me. <laughs> this is how software is developed, everyone. <laughs> So, but, but if I pass to you, you can pass to him, and she would pass to yeah. him, right? Yeah, sounds good. We can count that, so you know, would it be in left or right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shoulder to shoulder. Uh, Software three, developments three, are vague, four, everybody. One, two, three, four. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, one, two, three, don't drop it. Four, that's one. Okay. One, two. Okay, All right, we're at 55 seconds. No, no pressure. No executives are looking over your shoulder. Oh no! Okay, if you drop it, then it's it's dead. If you drop it, it's dead. All right, we're at 30 seconds. Like chirping from the audience. <laughs> Come on, guys, cheer them on. Come on, everybody. Yeah. All right. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. yeah, All right, we're at 10 seconds. Okay, you think 10? We have 10 more seconds. You guys could get another ball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two, one, time. Okay. All right, how many balls did you guys get? Ten and three burns. 10 and 3 burned. Okay, so your completed was 10. And we estimated 10. Cool. <laughs> okay, so now you're going to get one minute, talk out loud. What do you think you could do better to get more next time? I think we could get closer. Uh, so there wasn't, there's, it's just air, as much time. air time could just be like this, right? Yeah. It, does, it doesn't have to be thrown. And we may not, I think I was, I was throwing it. I don't that think we could do more multiple balls at the same time. Yeah. Could we do it, it, it could we do it like, could we just do it like, do we have to catch it? Or do we just touch it? Air time. Could we do it like, could we just go? Why do you want that? Uh oh, team dynamics are at play here. That's one. So we could do like straight down. So I could go and then. And then we're all on. Yeah, so we wouldn't have to work that way. Evolution is happening. All right, you got 10 more seconds in your retro here. Yeah. <laughs> it should be yeah. Yeah. Well, you're, so you're, you're there. Okay. Perfect. Like that. Okay. All right, okay, we're done. We're done with retro. All right. All right, so planning. I would give you a minute, but I think you guys have it figured out. Okay, it should be 20, 20. 20. 20. 
20. 20? 20? Okay, do you guys think they can do 20? What's the confidence level out here? Yes? Okay. All right, ready? Okay, set. <laughs> Software never waits. Go. Yeah, yay. Woo. Woo. I mean, want to do the wave? Just do the wave. In here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, count with them. It's like a Sesame Street. You guys are so jealous. They're working hard up here for you guys to entertain you. All right, you got 25 seconds. All right, we are at 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, all right, so the quality went up, everyone. You guys just witnessed that in person. All right, so how many numbers? How many balls did we get? Like 95% success rate. Okay, yeah, I'm bad at math. He's, he's the guy that does the math for me. Okay, cool. So, what, what just happened, everyone? We just did Agile. Before we go. Oh, yes, we have prizes. Champagne and caviar for all our participants, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. There's nothing classier than champagne in a can, by the way. It's easy for packing. You're welcome. OK. So what we just did was we actually executed all the Agile events. We did sprint planning, where the teams got together and decided kind of what their estimate or commitment was. Um, so in first sprint, it was 10. In the second sprint, it was 20. We did sprint executions. That's where they actually did all the play. We had a sprint review, where they actually tallied up all their um, balls, and they showed their output. And then we did a sprint retrospective, and where they actually doubled their output. So 200%, that's pretty good. All right, let's give those guys a hand of applause. All right, so uh, how do we turn this into metrics? So we've got first commitment, and then we've got completed. Those are two key numbers that we're gonna focus on in a bit. But uh, let's hold our thought. I'm gonna tie up this concept of what is Agile, why is Agile important, why can you do Agile in your organization. It really lends to transparency as far as how well the team's doing. Teamwork, I mean, they obviously worked together and improved their uh, output. Um, predictability as far as being able to predict how many did I do last sprint, how much am I doing next sprint. And then finally, value delivery. So um, maybe not so much in the ball game, but really being able to meet your customers' needs and meet them where they are and have a faster pace of change. So now I'm gonna lend you to a quote by Charles Darwin, a famous scientist. And he said, it is not the strongest or the most intelligent who will survive, but those who can best manage change. Not to say that you guys weren't strong or intelligent. Um, I'm gonna actually use that quote and talk to you a little, about, a little bit about our agile transformation at Tableau. You might wonder, why 3.0? Where did one and two go? Well, let me share that with you. So here's a brief history of our Agile transformation at Tableau. Um, I'm gonna do it once again with emojis because I like them. And I don't know, how many people have seen a PowerPoint with emojis at TC so far? No, am I the first maybe? Oh, one, okay. All right, so V1. So let's rewind back to about seven years ago. We were, uh, Tableau was you know, delivering software once a year, those packaged disks, if anybody remembers back then. Uh, we were using waterfall uh, methodology, so a little bit slower as far as being able to deliver. Customer has a request, let's say, in, in mid-year. Okay, great, we'll get to it in our next release next year. Now, that's not being very responsive. So, you know, we had a couple of smart people at the company that were like, you know, we've heard about this thing called Agile. Why don't we try it? Okay, well, well how do we do it? So, we hired some consultants to come in, subject matter experts. And they came in and they trained all our teams on Agile, probably something a little bit more in depth than the ball game, but uh, they taught them the basic events, basic terminology, things like that. And the outcome was that we spent two years with them. We had a, a basic understanding. 
teams were armed and you know certified agile however they didn't really know what to do with it it's like teaching a kid a trick and then you're like okay go figure out the rest on your own so our outcome we spent a lot of money we had a good start uh, now fast forward two more years at this point we have a developer pool of about a thousand and we wanted to if anyone's ever seen Laverne and Shirley make it on our own so we wanted to grow up really beef up our agile expertise in-house and so what we did was we hired some in-house agile coaches uh, two to be specific and they didn't look like playboy bunnies but nonetheless they were focused on very technical agile practices things like mobbing xp test driven development and their engagement really was team would say oh uh, i think i have an issue with quality can you come coach me and then the coach would be like okay i'll teach you some you know mechanics of test driven development whatever and then that engagement's over and then off to another team so think about do the math two coaches a thousand developers it's probably not going to be very efficient it's going to be a little more of a, like a whack-a-mole approach of like okay i'm going to go solve this problem i'm going to solve this problem so now, this, I'm going to fast forward us to about a year ago, and that's when we really say that the Agile transformation begun, the 3.0. And so at this point, we're now at a development um, staff of about 1,500, and our issue at this point is scaling and governance. So how do we have two Agile coaches making sure that Agile is really uh, propagating across every team? So at this point, we decided we're going to take a little bit different. We're going to do a change, method, change management methodology um, where we're socializing Agile not only at the team level, but in middle management and at the executive level so that everyone's speaking the same language and having the same expectations. We're also building tooling as far as metrics, which I'll show you in a little bit, Agile team practices, which are you know, kind of based on industry best practices, things like definition of done, um, team dynamics, things like that. And then finally, we are using a model called embedded coaching, where we actually have each Agile coach, we have five now, aligned with each of our key dev areas. So we have areas such as data, analytics, platform and infrastructure, et cetera. And so I, as a coach working with data, really understand the needs of that specific organization, and I'm able to coach and prioritize based on that organization's needs. Um, what does embedded coaching look like? Um, I always think it sounds like you're being a tick, but <laughs> Hopefully I'm not draining the blood out of anyone. So um, what it looks like is that we're actually attending all of their team events, their stand-ups, their refinements, sprint planning, et cetera, and we're coaching them along the way, whether that's in-person at the moment feedback or having one-on-ones with their scrum master or their leadership to make sure that they're all practicing healthy agile practices. So what's the outcome? I would say it's still TBD because we're still a year in. But we've had really good results. As I mentioned, we've um, done embedded coaching with over three dozen teams at this point, and we're you know, prioritizing our backlog for coaching all the rest of our 140 Agile teams. All right, so now for the exciting part, let's look at our visits or da team dashboards. So has anyone ever seen a burn down chart before? Do you guys use those, anybody? Okay, cool, some of you. All right, so uh, this is a typical sprint burn down that you might see in different types of tooling, such as Jira. So of course at Tableau, we use Tableau. And so what you'll see on the x-axis is a, a time axis. So this is a typical sprint, which is usually about two weeks at Tableau. And on the y-axis, you're gonna see uh, the story points or just think level of effort for a given sprint for a team. So our teams estimate. And then what you see in that gray, line is the ideal burn down. So in the perfect world where everyone does the same amount of work every single day and we're all robots, this is what the completion rate would look like in a sprint. Now this is the actual work of what actually happened in the team. Often you hear when you ask teams how they're doing, yeah, we're on track, we're on track, but this actually gives data to show the team, are you really on track? So you'll see here the team kind of coasted by, they made a commitment and then half mid sprint, you know, production support issue comes in or stakeholder says, actually, I, this thing's on fire, I need help. And so what happens is the actual work amount increases. And so that's why you see that little molehill right there. And then as in most typical dev teams, scramble at the end of the sprint and a quick burn down to what they could finish, leaving some amount of work on the table, in this case, 38 points. All right, so I'm gonna draw your attention to some of the KPIs we've got here. So we've got a committed amount, similar to the ball game. So in this situation, they thought they could finish 80 points. 
And then what did they actually complete? 60 points. And so our first metric is delivery, and that is just completed over committed. So in this case, based on their original commitment, they completed 75% of their expected sprint. Next, I'm going to draw your attention to the added and removed. So if you recall that mole hill, we've got 18 points that were added in the sprint, and then zero removed. So as an agile coach, I would look at this and say, if you add in work, you probably should be taking out work, because if you only had a fixed amount of time you thought you could do something, there's probably a discussion that needs to happen there. In this case, the team did not heed that, and they just kept working, maybe burning the midnight oil, who knows. Then balance and churn are the metrics that are based off of the added and removed. So balance is that concept of if you put something in, you take something out, because you should respect your team's capacity and the team's initial commitment. So in this case, the balance was uh, completed plus added, which is the 60 plus 18, and then you would minus out any removed. In this case, they removed nothing, so zero, over your committed. So in this case, their balance was 123%. The ideal target for all these metrics is 100%. And then finally, churn, which is a different take on it, is even if you added 18 points and you took down 18 points and removed them from your sprint, you'd have 100% balance, but your churn is still there because that was a scope change. And so just because you put in something and take something out, the team is still interrupted. And there's still effects of scope churn. And so the churn takes into account the completed plus added plus the absolute value of removed over the committed. And what I always focus on as an Agile coach is not focusing in on any one specific number. Oh, my delivery is bad. I just need to focus on my delivery. I would focus on these metrics holistically. Has your delivery and your balance and your churn improving over time? Speaking of over time, the next chart I'll show you is our trending of those key metrics. So this shows over multiple sprints, how well is that team doing on the balance, churn, and delivery? So we've got color-coded balance is blue, churn is orange, delivery is green. And we have this taupe band in the middle, if you see that. So the taupe band is a plus or minus 20% of 100. So as you all know, it's very hard for a team to hit 100% all the time. They might actually be robots. That's what I think when I see 100% on everything. So this shows that you know, we, we, we give or take a little, so about 20%, but we'll see that the team is actually doing pretty good on balance. They're doing good on those trade-off discussions. However, their churn is still increasing over time. So I'd be asking the product owner, why are we adding and taking out more stuff in the sprint? Similarly, it seems like their delivery was good, but once their churn started increasing, the delivery started dropping. So maybe they're affected by that scope change. Scope change. So these are just conversations we have with the team to show trending over time. Finally, the Agile Cardiogram, uh, if anyone's ever seen an EKG, it's kind of like a rebranding. Um, so the Agile Cardiogram actually links together a team's burn down over time. Because any one sprint, you can't tell if a team's good or bad just based on one point in time. It's how well they're doing over time. And so in this case, the team had that little molehill sprint in the beginning, but it looks like they were burning down all their stuff. But as time goes on, they're taking on more and more commitments without the same level of completion. And so at this point, I would coach this team and say, hey, you guys are taking on twice as much and finishing half as much, so you probably need to bring down that commitment because the idea is to be predictable. Because when you think about release planning or whatnot, you want your teams to really have confidence in what they think they can do. So in summary, the purpose of the Agile Team Dashboard is to allow for teams to have data-driven discussions and be able to improve based on that output. Oops. Next is org-level dashboards. So think about it. I'm an executive. Let's say I lead a quarter of those 140 teams. Do you think I'm going to actually click through every team's dashboard and see how they're doing? I don't think so. I think we pay them a little too much for that. So we, what we do is we aggregate team-level data so that an executive can at a quick glance say, how are my teams doing and where do I need to focus my energy or refocus my Agile coach's energy? So here uh, we have what we call spectrum analysis. So same trending metrics, balance churn delivery. But if you guys recall that taupe band that has the ideal range of plus or minus 20%, this shows the percentage of teams that are within that ideal band. So the idea being, obviously, every org wants to say, oh, I have 100% of my teams with an ideal band. But realistically, it looks like this org here has, you know, hanging around the 80% target for balance, but their delivery can use a little work. And so we then actually allow the executive to drill in and see which teams or which areas might need more help and where we can focus our agile coaching. 
So with that being said, I'm gonna bring Isaac back up and he's gonna tell you uh, how under the cover all these metrics look. Thank you, Amy. Um, it comes up frequently, very frequently. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to give you guys a brief history. Can you hear me now? Is everything good? Uh, in, <clears throat> sorry, in the beginning, we had two contracting coaches that came in and they were trying to unload Agile onto us as a committee. I, I think at one point I was supposed to be given a certificate, but I never quite got it. Uh, we had an on-premise ticketing system. We had um, decided to build some Agile dashboards on, off of that ticketing system. And it was the operational data store uh, which might pose a problem, but if you're a small team and you don't have very useful data, it's probably not a big deal. Uh, so we had to shim a lot of our da dashboards up with these uh, spreadsheets in order to make any sense of them. Uh, this actually worked really, really, really great when we were a small team and nobody used data to understand anything. Uh, but the problem with Tableau is we used Tableau and we started growing exponentially. Um, this became a big problem for us because our dashboards actually started impacting performance on the operational data store. Uh, so fast forward to the next iteration of Agile Data. <clears throat> we decided, well, the operational data store, like running your analytics off of an operational data store is probably a bad idea, so maybe we should just reproduce it. Uh, so we reproduced it, we brought along those shims, as I'm calling them, the spreadsheets that help like, actually make the Agile analytics work. We brought that with us and we had, this, uh, we had our analytics needs, but we weren't really addressing one of the major problems. One of the major problems that we had with our data is that the shape wasn't consistent with the type of reporting that we needed to have done. We needed to have this agile measure like the burn down, but we did not have the data to support that. That's what the spreadsheets were for. Um, and somebody in the org had to maintain all these spreadsheets. Um, so we had this fundamental problem. We had to get our data into shape. So we got our data into shape. So how did this happen? This happened by, we started moving our actual data onto the cloud as is. We started treating the cloud as our transformational architecture where a lot of the data was changed. This meant that we were able to move those spreadsheets actually off of our desktops, our personal machines, to create these reports and move them into the cloud. This was fundamentally a huge shift in how we were able to do uh, analytics and data. It was amazing. Um, I would like to point out that there's so many benefits to embracing cloud architecture, uh, scalability, concurrency, fallback. I make errors all the time. I need stuff to be restored. Um, I'm thankful I have a job where I can restore data before anybody finds out. Um, in short, I love, I love the cloud more than you can imagine. Um, but we still had this fundamental problem of shape. Uh, by embracing a lot of the agile tenants, we were able to like, start dealing with this shape problem. Uh, we wanted this blob amorphous mass of data to turn into this tabular form where we could build these beautiful dashboards off of. Uh, so we were able, using the cloud architecture and treating it as a, a transformational architecture, we were able to iterate in these tight iterative circles of creating this blob data from one side and moving it over to this tabular form on the other side. Because I had to do metrics and measures from this data and my math is actually quite poor. Um, this allowed the agile coaches who I was working with most of the time in this area to engage with me where we were able to actually commit to these quick, tight iterative circles as opposed to a traditional pipeline where the data comes in at one end and some type of measure or metric pops out at the other end. Um, now we have this beautiful data, groomed, cleaned, just beautiful, beautiful information. We we're able to create a very analytic rich environment. We'll be able to create a bunch of these dashboards that drive team level discussions with data and drive organizational level discussions with data. Um, but there's one fundamental problem with making good data. Can anybody guess? 
it's a gateway drug. That's the problem is people always want more. They always want more information. Um, in short, what I'm trying to sell is move data to the cloud whenever you can. It's, it just will benefit you so much greater in the long run. Uh, sorry about this. Uh, reshape your data. Uh, if the data doesn't match the data needs, you can reshape that data. We have all our transformational processes work in the cloud architecture architecture and it allows us to reshape data very quickly. We can scale and unscale as we need to when we have to do it. And learn to love Agile. Agile has been a great boon for us at Tableau. And with Amy and I working on a lot of the measures and metrics that you saw on the dashboards, uh, we were able to do these quick iterative one week sprints to get the data up quickly, like quicker than I've ever seen. Uh, what should I remember? I'm going to bring Amy back up here. All right, so I know a lot of you will have to go home and do the report out to your teams. I know I always am like, oh my gosh, I don't remember what happened. So uh, we've summarized this into some quick, easy bullets that you can report back to your teams. So number one, changing mindset requires change management. Just telling someone to be agile doesn't help. You actually have to work through with them. Like I said, we've done embedded coaching. We've done socialization at all levels of the leadership down to the team. And we also have some agile team practices that we follow, as well as using metrics. Oh, you can. Yes. Yeah. Uh, use data to do your dirty work. Don't do all the heavy lifting yourself. Don't keep that spreadsheet on your desktop to help fix and adjust everything. Get it into a state that's useful to you and useful to the company. Uh, of course, I'm always going to sell Embrace the Cloud. Just embrace it. Love it for what it is. It is a cherished, cherished thing. And finally? Actually, I think Isaac might be like getting kicked back I'm, from some cloud company. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> and four, you too can live a life of champagne wishes and okay. data-driven dreams. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs>